Hey guys, good morning. This is Diary of a Coach, episode 264. 264 Diary of a Coach. How are you this morning? It's a beautiful morning in Abuja, the federal capital city of Nigeria in West Africa. How are you? Hope you slept well. Hope you are chilling. Hope you are resting your brains. Hope you are recalibrating. Hope you are just taking care of yourself as we count down to the new year. It's a beautiful year. So this episode is titled what does a good year mean to you? What is the meaning of a good year? What does it mean to have a good year? What is a good year? What's a good year? So yesterday, after I talked about the five things to focus on in 2020, some people came to my DM and said, I am an employee. You spoke like you were speaking to only business people. I agree with point number one. Point number one was minimize your connections. Point number two, hey, the kids are watching. Oh, hi, Manji. Hi, Kempia. Love you guys. Hi, Atayo. Love you, baby. Thanks for everyone who's joining. So let me quickly do a recap. Some people say, but I'm an employee. You talked about the five things to focus on in 2020. And they were strictly connected to business people like how about we employees? And let me quickly do a recap of what I talked about yesterday. Say so number one, minimize your connections. Be, 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 be focused on connections that serve you. Number two was be revenue centric. Um, number three was build a system. Number four, um, what was number four again? I can well for I'm five. Like I said this thing off the top of my head. But I remember that number two and number three were in contest for employees. Revenue centricity and building a system. So, I want to address that a bit. That you're an employee does not mean that the only income you should be earning is your salary. That's a recipe for frustration. That's a recipe for frustration. Whether you are an employee or you're, you're a business owner, either way, you need to have multiple sources of income. It is not good for you, especially for your mental health, to have just one source of income. Dr. Kinsley O'Connor, my one and only Oga at the top, I wish you a beautiful celebration, sir. Thank you, Hepziba. I talked about number four was define your loyalty and be bold about it be courageous about it the number five was determine who is family to you and stay with them thank you thank you hebziba irabo for that god bless you Sika. i see you thank you so let me address that number two very well whether you're an employee or, or you have a business you must make sure that you have multiple sources of income it is very important in fact not these days when there are so many options there are agricultural options where you put in some money and you get your return on investment after six months or three months. These options, Triver Greek is there. Farming, farm Crowdy is there. there are, those are options. Do you know you can actually buy shares in Piggy Vest? You can buy shares in any of these technology-driven um, cowrie-wise. You can buy shares in cowrie-wise. You can put your money in different technology driven investments and they will pay back dr kinsley says i'm his coach of the year ah i don't hammer i don't hammer i've blown thank you sir i honor you you've been very helpful to me always not even this year alone and god will bless you for my sake in jesus name so i want you to know that as an employee you must you must concentrate on how do I get more money into my account? I, want, I don't even want to start giving examples. All I want to charge you is make up your mind that I need to make more money into my account. How can I do that? Simple. Your mind will open. 
The kind of questions we ask ourselves determine the kind of answers we get for ourselves. So you must keep asking yourself, I need to increase my revenue. I need to increase my revenue. How can I get more money into my account? You need to think like that. You see that people are writing books every day, every day. Coach Sam is writing, Chris Fowler is writing. People are writing books. Instead of you to say, if I sell this man's book and I'm making a commission on it, it will give me more money now. Oh, okay, so how much is your book? My book is 5.5. Five. How much can you give it to me? Okay, I can give you a 3.5 or 4K. You keep 1K. I'll take care of transportation. Do you know that for every book you're selling, you're making 500, 1K, 500, 1K. By the time you have sold 100 books, do you know what that means for you? So if all you do is collect the books of the people that you respect and you are selling them and you're making your commission, more money is coming in. If all you do is, okay, all these people doing program, Eita your Ologe just finished Regenerate number point, 3.0 in Lagos. And she's already planning Regenerate 4.0. Do you know you can go and say, Ma, when is your next Regenerate? I want to be your marketer. Let me help you promote it. When I get a person, how much can I get? She said, oh, I have a finance fee or a commission or so, so, so percentage. Do you know what that means? For instance, in soccer and BSG, for every person you bring, you earn 10% and we give you either cash or we convert it to cost money. Some people have attended a soccer course because of the commissions they have accumulated, which has added to their capacity development. So it's not a function of, eh, you know, I don't even know what kind of business I want to do. You know this Nigeria. You know things are just hard. You know there are no customers. You know things are not like that. You know, because you don't understand. You know, the thing is, you're just talking, all these motivational talkers. It is not a function of motivational talk. Oh. It's that you are not ready to think it. You must ask yourself, in what other ways can I get money into my account legitimately? Very, very important. Itayo says, or oh, you are both an employee and have a business. Nobody should have, still have only one source of income in 2020. Oh, very important. It then he says, for employee, increase your value proposition. Start local, think global. It works for both employees and employers. God go bless you now. May God bless you guys for me. So, well, let me now go back to the original. Okay, so that was to address the revenue thing. Then to talk about the systems thing. Yesterday I was telling a particular woman, I said, you do interior decor. You are a civil servant. I know civil service in Nigeria says, don't do business. You can only do agricultural business, but don't do anything other business provided you are in civil service. That is okay, no problem. I said, but madam, this is your work. You do interior decor. If you see her house, eh, solid interior decoration. And I asked her, so how do you use your weekend? She said, eh, well, I just do decoration in our church. Then those people in our people, those people in my circle that have wedding, I help them to do their wedding. I said, for free? He said, eh, eh, eh. She started stammering. I said, that is where the problem lies. You need to now ask yourself, if I spend five hours, six hours every weekend doing decoration for people in my church, and it is free, how have I leveraged on that to promote myself and be visible? Because whether you collect money or you don't collect money, you are doing interior decoration. So Kukuma collect the money now. Is that not why they say, if you want to eat a frog, I'll be a toad. Kukuma eat a big one. If whether I collect money or I don't collect money, I do what I'm passionate about, then I will rather collect money for doing it. So the lesson to learn, to add to that part of what we said yesterday is, Learn the business of your passion in 2020. I'm adding that that should be number six then to yesterday's episode. Learn the business of your passion. The only way you can make more money outside your salary is to also add learning business of your passion. Many of you do what your passion is. You are passionate about many things, but you are doing it for free. Then you now say, you see this God... God gave me for free, so I want to do it for free. That mindset is a dysfunctional mindset. Some people say, I don't even know how to charge. I don't know how to ask for money. I'm shy. Learn the business of it. Go and learn how to price. Go and learn how to charge a fee. Go and learn how to negotiate. Go and le learn these things. The internet is overflowing with information. And I told you guys two days ago in episode 262, um, I said, Hire a coach. When I say hire a coach, sometimes it looks like I'm marketing myself. It's not about me. Eitayo is there to coach you guys. 
Idain is there to coach you guys. Rashida Dadekaya is there to coach you guys. Innocent Usa is there to coach you guys. I'm seeing them online. They can coach you. Find someone to teach you how to charge a fee for what you are passionate about. It's very important. Emmanuel says, if me that is a coach and trainer has a coach in Coach Sam, <laughs> you that you are not a coach, you need a coach. I salute you, sir. And Sikhan says, grow from enthusiasm to entrepreneurship. I beg you, I am begging you, please, let 2020 make sense to you. I beg. I beg. Think, how do I get more money into my pocket? The more the money, the better your dream. Oh. I'm telling you. The more money you have. Now, now the dream will they confuse you. You know, some people, they dream plenty. There is no money. Some people, Kuma, they have so much money, they don't even know what dream to execute because the, the money is... That is where you should be. You should be at a level where money is not the problem. It's which dream to execute that should be the problem. Your decision problem should be which dream, not which how much. Think, how do I get more money into my account? And the way to do that is to also ask yourself, how do I develop my entrepreneurial teeth? How do I develop my entrepreneurial competencies? Be entrepreneurship focused. Whether you're an employee or you're an employer, we all need to think entrepreneurship because it's a mindset. Once you think entrepreneurship, you're thinking of solutions for people. You're thinking of charging them a fee. You're thinking of revenue. It's a circle and you need it in your mind. So what is the definition of a good year? For me, the definition of a good year is that at the end of every year, I think of the solutions I've provided to people. Impact is a definition of a good year for me. Number two, the definition of a good year is how much money I have also made in that year. I am a lover of wealth. And wealth looks good on me. Fortunately enough, I am not the spendthrift type. I am not the flamboyant type. I'm not the type that is so materialistic so wealth looks good on me because i am a modest spender i am a representative of a good spender so money looks good on me and i look for money so the number two definition of a good year to me is revenue and profit i have made number three definition of a good year for me is the legacy i have added to my previous legacies as a year is turning out I'm asking myself, have I consolidated on my legacies from all over the years? Because I want to be remembered for some things. For instance, the number one thing I want you guys to remember me for when I die, I want you to remember that Sam Overfemi never pretended. That is my number one legacy. I want to be remembered. The first thing I want to be remembered for when I die is that Sam Overfemi never pretended. I hate pretense. I like to show myself like this. I like to be transparent. I like to be vulnerable. That is why sometimes I even say too many things just in the, in the bid to be vulnerable. My number one legacy is I don't want to be known as a pretender. My number two legacy is I want to be known as someone whom if he could give his head and still be alive, he would give you. I want to be known as a giver from the bottom of my heart, like genuine giver without any conditions or any motive, ill motive attached to it. That's the legacy I want to leave. I want to also be remembered for someone that always had a solution for every problem possible. So a definition of a good year for me are these three things. The impact I have made, the wealth I have grown, and the legacies I have left behind. What is your definition of a good year? Please tell me. Dr. O'Connor that says, know your purpose, be passionate about it, and put a price on it. The three P's of entrepreneurship. Chai. This is a mab word on marble. Know your purpose, be passionate about it, and put a price on it. Kai, this one is talking to me. I think this is my story. Know your purpose, be passionate and put a price on. This is exactly my story. Thank you, Dr. Okonoda. Moradeke Ishaya says, I am in Kaduna. I run a private school. I need a coach here in Kaduna. Please suggest. There is Haruna Mamman. 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 
I think Haruna. There is Yusuf Lengi in Kaduna. There is Elijah Dodo in Kaduna. So send me a DM. I'll give you their details. Contact them. Moradeke, they will help you. There's also Fola. Fola Sheyu Rojubokan in Kaduna. So I have named four people already instantly that are in Kaduna that can help you. Moradeke Ishaya. So send me a DM on Facebook. I'll send you their contact details. The second says, Coach, I think you need to carry your student, our students along. Please give them tips for 2020. For students, okay. 2020, if you are a student and you are watching this diary, I want you to pay attention to the following things. Number one, the first thing that is your priority as a student is your books. Know your course. Whatever course you are reading, know it for knowing it. Don't just go cramming, 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 cramming. I just want to cram to pass. I just want to get a good grade. It go hurt you. It go hurt you. I know that some people say finish with first class two one. Yes, the best possible grade you can finish with, please finish with it. I had a two two in the university, but I understood my course very well. I didn't cram. I don't believe in cramming. So I wish I had a two one. I wish I had a first class. I did not get a first class. I did not get a two one. I had a two two, but I understood my course. Understand your course, please. That's your primary mission for being in school as a student. Then why? understanding your course and getting the best possible grade please learn business in school please do business in school find a need that students have and find a way to meet that need so that your supplies will be constant i did business in school me and my girlfriend in school then we did business so we we're selling lingeries pants bra i learned a lot doing that business we'll go to the market there's one market called mudalawal market in bauchi we'll go and buy bra buy pants buy lingerie buy all those things come back from one guy one abdullahi fine nice guy the guy was very good to us we came back to the hostel we priced the bra priced the lingerie the pants package it together she took it to the hostel sold out so we made money we we're doing our book she even finished with the two one so it's not that it did, it did not distract us. She finished with two, and I finished with two, two. We did our book, but we did business. Then number three, while you're a student, create a lot of connections. Create a lot of friendships that can help you. There are people in your class, they are looking like dummies. They get money, oh. The current DG of NITDA was my classmate. And thank God we're good friends. So now when I call on him, he doesn't say, ah, this is where is he coming from? You don't know where your classmates will become in the next 10 years. I'll leave you with these three tips. Face your book. Do small business in school. Learn business. And then remember your classmates. Connections there for school. Where, where? People day. There are connections in school and there are people that you will need in future. That's my advice for students. Uh, Abbasiano says, Bro, I don't know how much you make out of from doing this here. You are indeed a blessing to me. What are you doing here so far free? What you are doing here so far free is what my company pays huge amounts to people to come and teach us. God bless you. Thank you, Abbasiono Opodo. Thank you. You are always giving me inspiring feedback. This, for me, is part of the legacies I want to be remembered for. And this is the impact I believe I can give you. Diary of a Coach is a blessing to my heart. It's so dear to me and so dear to many people watching that it will never stop by the grace of God. Um, then he says, just yesterday, someone said to me that why will I say I like money from the pulpit and in church? I told him that that is me. I can't pretend about it. If you don't like money, money will not come to you. Go and write it down. If you don't like money, money will not come to you. And I'm not talking about liking money consciously. Subconsciously desire wealth. Then wealth will come. I'm, I've never been stranded financially. Oh. Never. Why? I desire wealth. Wealth comes to me because he knows that I'm a receiver and I'm a distributor of wealth. People around me know I give easily. So money sees me as a vehicle, as a channel. Money comes to me easily. My wife calls me money spinner. Money comes to me easily. I make money easily by the grace of God. And I give money easily. So if you don't like wealth and money, it is your cup of coffee. I love money. I love wealth. I love people to give me money. Give me money. Give me money. Give me money. I love money. So if you don't love money, I'm sorry. You're missing a big point. Dr. Okonoda says... Should you have said you like poverty? You see? Or should you say you don't like money? I beg you. In fact, Eitayo says, boss, you not tell us what you they do when you don't get first class. So. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, I don't. I, I really don't know. You know, the thing is, first and foremost, I wasn't really educated about the educational system. I just jumped, got into university, completely naive. My going to university in 100 level was my first time in a university environment. I had no idea what the grading looked like. I had no idea what anything looked like. So I, I was jump-started by one carryover in 100 level in the first semester. But then, here we are. But hey, I think I've, another dysfunctional belief I used to have then, I was not particular about 2 and or first class. I was not even, it didn't bother me. I, I, I think my modesty became a dysfunction. I was too modest about being a high flyer in class it didn't matter to me i was like i will do what i can do if i pass good if i don't pass well i just now will not carry over and i will not get a third class so i think that mindset also was a disservice maybe i should have been a bit more ambitious like okay you know what the minimum we need to live here with is two one and then strategically you know hit it but then all that is gone now so i love today's episode today's episode has been interactive has been lovely Guys, as you know, every Saturday I invite you to join Aitayo in her closed group, even though it's for females. Uh, so you need to, for, for guys, you need to step aside. For females, you know, we're joining Inspiring Women group for today's episode 112, if I'm not mistaken, of her mental health series. So it starts at 10 a.m. Aitayo, be kind enough to drop the link for females here to join. It's a free joining group. It's a closed group. But it's a powerful group. Every Saturday, we talk about mental health. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. So please check the comment section. Click on it if you're a female. Join the group for free. At 10 o'clock, Tayo goes live on her video to talk about mental health. Today is episode 112. And you would love it. It is always punchy. And I try not to miss it, no matter my shadow. Even when I'm busy, I try to catch up. So please, Tayo, drop the link for us. And we get there straight up. Itayo says, this is another lesson for the students here. Settle down quickly. Work hard. Thank God for Coach Sam. Yes, settle down quickly and work hard. Because true, true, that was where I fell through. I just... Ah. In fact, my first GP, 100 level, first semester was 2.95. I was jumping. Hey, I got 2.95 with a carryover in one practical physics class. It was later I was asking myself, why were you celebrating 2.95? You couldn't hit 3.95. You couldn't target 4 points or 5 points. You are celebrating 2.95. It's miseducation. You get because I was the, I'm the first person in my immediate family to go to tertiary institution anyway. Or to a university rather. So so for me, it was like a milestone already in itself. I was wondering who is talking about grades when I may be the first person to go to university. So, so it, those are things that I needed to, re- to have known earlier. But then we move. Thank you for watching Diary of a Coach. Hey, I'm waiting for you to drop the link before I close down this episode. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying your Saturday. This is the last Saturday of 2019. This is the last day of gift giving. This is the last day of gift giving on Diary of a Coach. This week is the week of gift giving. Whom have you been giving gifts to? And who has been giving you gifts? Remember, gift doesn't have to be material or physical. It could be time, it could be attention, it could be love, it could be call, it could be anything. Then this is the second longest episode of DOAC so far. Thank you so much for watching Diary of a Coach. I love you. Fantastic. Tayo has dropped the group. So inspiring women. If you're a woman, please click on that link. Let's meet up in inspiring women's group right away. Sika, you did not receive any gifts. Go and give someone. Don't worry. Give someone a gift. Your gift is coming and you will not regret it. Thank you so much. I need to go now so I don't take too much of your time again. Thank you so much. God bless you. I love you. This is episode 264 of Diary of a Coach. I'm out. Bye.